Hey guys, Jen from Vent Yoga, and we're going through the yamas right now. The yamas are the very first step in the eight limb path that will lead you to enlightenment, okay? Now, the yamas are moral disciplines or ways that you interact with the world around you. There's five total. We've already covered ahimsa, which is nonviolence, satya, which is truthfulness, asteya, which is non-stealing, and now we're on brahmacharya, which is right use of energy. Now, if you look this one up, sometimes it will be associated with celibacy. And kind of the history behind that is that it's where you're putting all of this energy. You should be saving it for things that help you go down this path. So it's not necessarily celibacy. It's more that there's a lot of energy. They don't want you kind of just putting your energy out to everything. But this right use of energy, this one is really, really pertinent right now. And the reason why is because I saw this quote the other day that I love, um, and it, it says, stop the glorification of busy. Stop the glorification of busy. Because that's what it is right now in our society. The more busy you are, the more worthy you are in other people's eyes, and eventually in your own. So if you've got all these things, all these plates flying through the air, people are so amazed. Oh my gosh, how can you do all of that? And they pump you up and they think you're amazing. In reality, it might not be adding to your life and it might not be adding to this path towards enlightenment to juggle all of this stuff just for the sake of juggling all of this stuff. You don't need to be on 17 different committees if you're not passionate about them. Just because somebody asked you doesn't mean you have to, right? So this yama is, this self-discipline is to only put your energy into what matters to you, what propels you down this path, to stop putting it into negative, to put your energy into the positive things, into your passions, into the things that make you come alive, to stop saying yes to everything that's asked of you. This one also comes into play on your mat. Because when we're on our mat, then there might be a posture that we're never going to do. We might have a shoulder injury and we may never do handstand away from the wall. But yet our ego just keeps trying it and trying it. And I'm not saying don't challenge yourself, not at all. But your energy might be better spent in a plank pose, strengthening rather than showing off. So this, where do you put your energy? This is a huge one for a lot of people because we spread it really thin nowadays. We spread it really, really thin. How often do you just sit and think? Like go sit under a tree, no book, no podcast, no friends to talk to and just think. Putting your energy into kind of designing your future, into brainstorming, into thinking about what you want out of life. That's huge, but we don't do it anymore because it doesn't make us look busy. And that translates into not important, not worthy. So in this yama, I want you to start noticing where you put your energy. What do you dive all into? What can you cut? out of your life, that's pulling your energy that you don't need anymore. This moral discipline of only giving to what benefits you and others. And to stop the rest of it. There'll be someone else to pick up that, you know, that board that you're on or that volunteer or whatever it is. Put your energy towards what makes you feel alive. And then that's going to compound and compound and compound as it propels you towards that path of enlightenment. Everyone you come in contact with is gonna see your passion and then they're gonna become excited. So use this one, and this is, a, this is a tough one, to start cutting things out of your life that just aren't serving you anymore. They're, they're taking your energy, they're giving nothing in return. 